So I want to talk about three different Packers players that have a make or break season coming into 2024. And I was looking through the Packers 2025 free agents and looking at who I thought coming into 2024 had the most you know important year of their career just because you look at some of these guys depending on how they do this upcoming season is going to factor into you know whether or not the Packers decide to bring them back or if they even get a big kind of contract with some kind of other team so first off we have Eric Stokes who is going to be playing in the fourth year of his rookie contract and with Eric Stokes he came in as a rookie back in 2021 played in 16 games stayed pretty healthy played in 934 snaps And had a very good season as a rookie, a 66.3 PFF grade. Look at some of his stats. Only allowed reception 51% of the time. 51% reception percentage allowed. Had nine pass breakups and only a 78.8 passer rating allowed. Then these past two seasons, we have seen his play take a hit. His play, uh, you know, not match the level that we saw in his rookie season in 2021. And he dealt with a ton of injuries. And like I said, he played in 16 games his rookie season. Only played in nine games in 2022 and then three games this past year in 2023. And so that's really the the big concern with Stokes is his injury history. And I think that's going to play a big factor in the kind of player he is in 2024. So looking at, though, his his second season in 2022, here are his stats after I just read the uh, first year stats. 51% reception percentage allowed back in 2021, but then 84% reception percentage allowed in 2022. He played in 477 snaps, so about half the amount. He had zero pass breakups in 2023. And so going from, or sorry, in 2022. So going from a nine in 2021 to then zero the following season, he had a 78.8 pass rating allowed back in 2021 as a rookie. And then it jumped to 125.8 pass rating allowed in his second season. And so I think that's a question with Stokes. There's a lot of question marks here. First off, the... Injury concerns, can he stay healthy? Second off, can he get back to how he looked his rookie season? Because even in 2022, before he got injured, he was not playing like he did his his rookie year. Then the next guy we have is A.J. Dillon, who, of course, signed back to Green Bay after Aaron Jones got released. The Packers bring in Josh Jacobs, draft Marshawn Lloyd in the third round. And with with A.J. Dillon, if you look at his stats in his, his four seasons in Green Bay— First season, 5.3 yards per attempt, then 4.3, then 4.2. This past season had the worst year of his career in Green Bay at only 3.4 yards per attempt. And so the Packers, I think, you know, with them drafting Marshawn Lloyd in round three, that shows you what they think about their their backfield. They thought they needed someone else to come in there and, you know, be able to utilize to potentially be the number two guy. And so I think this year is a big year for A.J. Dillon because if Marshawn Lloyd really solidifies that number two running back job, it could be tough for A.J. Dillon to stick around in Green Bay because I don't see them paying him any kind of big money. And if he does have a good year and whatever amount of snaps he he does get, he could end up signing you know some kind of contract elsewhere this offseason. But if he gets you know beat out by both Josh Jacobs, who I assume will be RB1, he, he definitely will. But if Marshawn Lloyd beats him out, it could be tough for A.J. Dillon in the future. And I still think he could sign him with some other team, but this is a big year for him. If he performs well, he could get a contract elsewhere if the Packers you know, don't want to pay him. And so that'll be an interesting battle to watch. And the final one, the final guy I want to talk about in this video is Josh Myers, Packers center, 2021 second round pick. He has been okay in his three years in Green Bay. He has not been great. If you look at his PFF grades in uh, 2023, 55.8. This is out of 100, so that's not great. 60.4 in 2022 and then 58.3 in 2021. The thing is, even with him being the center, the Packers have consistently had one of the best pass blocking offensive lines in the NFL. And so he has been a part of that. So I wouldn't say that he is a a bad center per se. And I also wonder when it comes to Jordan Love and how comfortable he is with Josh Myers being his center and sort of having that relationship with your center, you know, How impactful is Josh Myers when it comes to that relationship and chemistry with Jordan Love? That's something to keep in mind. But it is the final year of his contract, and after this season, depending on how he plays, the Packers will have to decide. Do they want to keep him around in 2024, or do they want to move on from him and try someone else? And there are a few different guys, I think, right now on the Packers roster who could potentially come in at center. You got Elton Jenkins, who has spent time there, even though I think he's better at guard. You have Zach Tom, who previously this offseason... There was some reports that came out from Rob Domofsky of ESPN, and it was something like, I believe somewhere in the Packers organization, they sort of said they saw him as a potential like Hall of Fame center if he were to get the chance there. 
So there's a few guys who could play center if Josh Myers left. You also have uh, Jacob Monk, who was drafted in round five from Duke, who has some experience at center. He may be the backup coming in this year. And so I think it comes down to the play of Josh Myers this season. If he plays really well, the Packers will probably keep him around. If he has a you know average to below average year, they could contemplate moving on from him and trying to you know use someone else who's already on this roster. So you know anytime a player has a, a contract year, a year where they're going to be a free agent, it's obviously a, a big year for them. If they play really well, they're going to get a, a big contract, whether that's in Green Bay or elsewhere. If not, then um, you know it's going to be tougher to get the the kind of money they want. So. Uh, big year for these three guys. We'll see how it all plays out. Let me know if there's any other players you think have a make or break year in 2024. But if you want more Packers content, feel free to subscribe down below and I'll see you guys next time.